Okay. Okay, I've just bought some new disc raiders for my Fairlane. Um, and I don't know when I'm going rusty. Uh, with all your newer vehicles and wheels, because you can see through them. Yeah, and you, you see this rusty old raiders and drums behind them, they look shit. So, yeah, I've decided to paint these while they're new. And I'll have to take the back ones off and paint them now as well. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, you can see I've masked up wheel studs. Um, I will put some lubricant of some kind. Uh, I'll probably put this Penetrol actually. I'll spray some of that on it. That's a rust preventative official base stuff. I'll put some of that on it before I put the nuts on. Um, yeah, as I said, masked up the studs. So I haven't masked up in here because there are already cups in here. Yeah. Makes me feel like I'm being diddled actually because if there's already cups in here, it means these raiders most likely would have come with new bearings and you know I've had to buy bearings separate. So but anyway, as I said, I haven't masked them up because I'll have, I'll be taking them out. What you don't do, um, you don't ever mix your bearing cups. Um, even though these are brand new. They might be a slightly different angle to the new bearing, so yeah, you don't, and you especially don't put new bearings into old cups or even old bearings. You know, if you if you take these off and grease up the bearings, you don't mix them up. You know, you don't put the bearing out of this one into the other one because they wear to the to each other, and yeah, they'll be different. Um, but yeah, as I said, had there not been a bearing cup in there, I would have masked that as well. So you don't get, you don't want paint on that surface because that's a very tight, exact fit. Um, in the back here, I did mask up where the seal goes. Uh, don't really show it. But <laughs> yeah, it's still clean. Um, and this bearing cup. It's going to be really hard to get out, actually. Normally, the area behind that is bigger than it, so you can get a rod in there. Either that or they've got a channel cut through it so that you can get a rod in there and knock them out. Oh, boss, I have no idea that is. I'm going to have to use this, the slide hammer with a hook in that to pull that out, I think. Um, as for the surfaces here... Don't worry about having paint on there, don't bother masking it, you know, like, I could actually go along there now, and, uh, you know, I've left it thin, you know, like I've just sort of sprayed around here, around here, not, you know, concentrated on the middle, but, yeah, don't worry about having paint on there, and that, the first time you drive it, the pads will chew that off, and, uh, uh, it's not an issue, it's actually better to not mask it because the pads won't come to the full edge of the machined area. So if you mask that up or wipe all that clean, you're still going to get rust either side of your pad where the pad runs. So by leaving it that way and letting the pad take the paint off, then you're not going to have any area that's going to go rusty. Um, I think when you're putting these back in, if you've never done wheel bearings before, um, use your old your old cup to tap in the new cup. Um, you don't want the hammer hitting your new cup because you can burr it and distort it and ruin it. So, yeah, put your new cup in as far as push it in as far as you can go, and then sit the old cup on top of it and put the hammer onto the old cup, like hammer the old cup onto the new cup to push it in, so you don't burr any of it. Um, and then when you put it on, well, you know, grease them all up. Um, and there's really no other way of doing that than to get your hands all greasy, squish it all through the bearings as, as much as you can. And 
wipe your hands when you're finished. Wear gloves if you don't want to get grease on your hands, but yeah, there really is. There's no other way of doing it than to have, get greasy hands. Uh, you know, you, you've got to squish it into the new, you know, right in through the bearings. You can't just coat a bit around the outside. Yeah, that doesn't work. Anyway, when you get them in and you get them on, tighten the knot right up. Yeah, tighten it right in, put a fair bit of tension, you know, probably like 50 pound or something like that, just to make sure. And then, you know, turn it around a couple of times if you can turn it. Actually, usually when you put that much pressure on it, it'll sort of almost lock it up. Uh, but you do that at first to make sure your cups are seated in and everything's seated in, and then you back it off. You so said, do it up hard, let it off, and then come back, come back again till you just get you know, a little bit of tension. It's actually a good idea um, before you put the final tension on. Um, if you're able to, you can't always, depending on the type of wheel. Um, oh, yeah, most of them have removable centre caps. But, you know, I like to do that while the wheel's on because then I can, you know, grab the top and bottom of the wheel and just tighten it enough until there's no play in it, you know. If you can, um, there are special tools and procedures you can go through to get the exact right tension, but it really sort of comes down to experience and just, you know, feeling it, you know, you, you, you do it up till there's a bit of tension, you, you, you know, till you've got no play in it, you turn it and make sure it's not binding, dragging, um, but you don't want it loose and you don't want it over tight either because either loose or over tight can ruin your new bearings so yeah if you haven't done it before you can probably you know use a, a, a proper um, gauge that shows how much tension you're putting on it but as I said most most people just know by experience, you just know by feel when you've got enough tension on it. As I said, if you can't, you grab the top and the bottom. Um, there's something you're doing too if you're checking for steer and play. You know, if you've got movement side to side, it could be tie right end, steering box, um, you know, rack and pinion, any of that. Um, if you're specifically checking, just for wheel bearings, um, yeah, top and bottom. Uh, so if you've got top and bottom movement, mind you, if you've got a real bad ball joint, that'll move there too. But yeah, but yeah, so when you're checking to see if you've done it up enough, yeah, hold it top and bottom. So. Anyway, keep it short. Uh, yeah, hope that's helpful to somebody. Bye.